In 2018, I had a psychotic break that would change my life forever. And the weird thing is that I didn't end up in a psych ward at the time, even though I probably should have. But I did end up in one six months later in May of 2019, shortly after I started to recover from my mental illness. So today I wanna to focus on that first bit of my recovery. The experience that really set it all off and set me up for success, even if I didn't really think that's what was happening at the time. And so, this is the story of how I ended up at a psych ward. And if you are new here, my name is Kit, and I have something called schizoaffective disorder, which is a condition where someone experiences symptoms of schizophrenia, such as delusions and hallucinations, but also symptoms of a mood disorder, either major depression, or in my case, bipolar. So with that out of the way, let's get started. I had my psychotic break in the last quarter of 2018 in a tiny room in New York City. I have made videos about this, so I won't go over that content here, but just know it was traumatizing, awful, and a time I never want to go back to ever again. And frankly, it left me broken. It left me with a pathetic excuse of a memory. I lost all my friends. I no longer had a place to live, and I was losing my dreams. In the end, my psychotic break took basically everything from me. And so, when I came home to North Carolina from New York, I didn't know what my life was going to be like. I think everyone craves a fresh start at some point. To give up everything you're doing and do something totally different. Live in a new place, get a new job, this kind of thing, this kind of desire, it seems pretty common. But sometimes life does that for you, without your permission, with no warning or preparation, and leaves you with nothing. And that's where I was. A broken person who had a fresh start forced upon them. And it would take me a while to build up a life worth living again, because I was starting from scratch. Now, before I go further, some content warnings. I'm going to carefully mention that during this time, I participated in a habit that used blades and created lots of scars, but I won't go into detail about it. And I'm also going to mention that I drank too much alcohol during this time, but I won't be going into detail about that either. All you really need to know is that I was doing both of these things during this extremely dark part of my life, and I was doing both of them a lot just to get through the day. But the thing is about this kind of stuff is that the benefits never last. It does get less effective over time, and you end up having to do more and more to get the same level of relief. And you can see where that would end very, very badly. Like in a psych ward, right? Anyways, I hid most of it, and a lot of people in my life still don't know how bad it was, because frankly, I was ashamed that I was having to do either of those things just to get through the day. And so months pass of this. I don't think much about the future. The present is a terrible place to be, and I just want all of it to stop. But not in a dangerous way. A healthy way. A healthy way of wanting to get better the right way. I knew that what I was doing wasn't working. I knew I could be better and have better skills. So I wasn't thinking about the big S word here. I was just thinking about getting my crap together. Because if I kept going down the path that I was going, things would not get better, they would only get worse, and I would destroy myself. Because that's the nature of self-destructive habits, is that they destroy you. So during this time, I thought very often about seeking higher levels of care, meaning psychiatric hospitals and the programs they provide. I realized eventually, in May of 2019, that I really am just scraping by and kind of need some serious help. So I get the idea that maybe I should just chuck myself into a psych ward and let someone else take care of me for a while. And maybe, just maybe, through that experience, I'd be able to get my crap together and get my life back. And so I figured, hey, maybe there's a day program that I can go to, do that for a few weeks, and maybe that would help me. This is called partial hospitalization, where you get to sleep in your own bed at night, but you have to be at the hospital or treatment center during the day. I plan to stay with close friends while I did the program. And they lived pretty close to the hospital, which was an hour and a half away from where I lived. And I definitely didn't have a job at the time, so my schedule was open enough that I could do something like this. I had it all worked out, planned to the nines, and set out to get treatment. And it did not go as planned at all. And so I ended up at a psychiatric hospital, and I walked in, I explained my plan to them and what I wanted. I told them my diagnosis, what I was going through, and then they asked me a ton of questions, which of course makes sense. And then they get to the scar making habit question, where they ask me if I want to do it or have done it recently. And me, without thinking, said, oh yeah, I do it all the time. I did it yesterday. Then, because psych words are all, if you're a danger to yourself or others, we need to involuntarily commit you. And well, yeah, they tried to involuntarily commit me. Those locked doors were really calling my name. 
So I'm like, crap, 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 crap. How do I avoid this? Which probably wasn't my best call given the whole scar making habit anyway. Like, yes, I did need to stop that, but I didn't think that was enough for them to force me to stay with them because of it. So naturally I started crying because I didn't want any of this. And so I decided I wasn't going down without a fight. And thus began an hours long process of technicalities. With periods of sobbing followed by periods of not sobbing. All while watching crappy cooking game shows. Looking at you guys, grocery games. Never gonna watch that show again. Eventually I did get a psychologist in front of me to talk about the whole thing. And I knew I had to be very careful with my words. What actually happened was we ended up striking a deal. Part of my reluctance to be admitted so suddenly was that I had nothing with me. No clothes, toiletries, etc. And I did not want to end up in a hospital gown as a result. All of it was sudden, and I don't do well with sudden and severe changes like this. But who would in this kind of situation? This crap kind of sucks. And so I talked to the psychologist and we agreed that I wouldn't be admitted right then and there that day, but I would come back and be admitted the following day. Because I, I kind of did need help, the kind of help that they could provide. The scar making stuff was really bad and it was getting worse. And with this deal, I'd be able to get all the toiletries I wanted, all the clothes I wanted. I'd be able to bring my giant stuff, B. Say hi, B. Yeah, there we go, yep. <laughs> and anything else that I might need to spend a week in a psych ward. It wasn't what I wanted, but it was whatever at this point. I just wanted help. And if a week in a psych ward would help, then by golly, I guess I'll do it. So I went home, gathered my things, and actually did return to the psych ward as promised. It was a lonely drive, it was a lonely time, and it was kind of a lonely week once I did actually check myself in. Back in the waiting room, I spent even more time watching crappy cooking shows. And to my shock, it took actual hours for me to get admitted. They were so quick to admit me the day before, but on the day I voluntarily came, yeah, it took hours. And I don't mean like one or two, I'm talking like six. But eventually it did happen. And I wanna say that putting yourself willingly behind multiple sets of mag lock doors with no way to get out for a week is a very interesting feeling. The thing is, once I was in, the medical professionals, the nurses, the therapists, etc., they did a lot of things that honestly I didn't find helpful. But the whole experience gave me a time to think in an arguably safe place, and I think there's value in that. They also upped my antipsychotic way too much because apparently hearing some voices, even if they're mostly positive and fine, is viewed as a bad thing, so I was kind of a zombie for a few days. But I met some interesting people, learned some interesting things, and definitely got hit on a few times. People even made out in the corners, and honestly, I was kind of like, ew, when I heard about that. And really what I did while I was there was I actually wrote a journal. So this is my actual psych ward stay journal that I just obsessively wrote all day, every day. And other than writing and hanging out with people that were nice to me, I basically spent my time just trying to get outside as much as possible. So I went out on smoke breaks with the people that smoked just because that would get me some fresh air. It's amazing what the outdoors can actually do for you when you're literally trapped inside the rest of the time. And the thing is the value of this time for me was not the med adjustments, it wasn't the therapy, and it wasn't their programs. It was just that I wasn't in a place where I could physically hurt myself and I had time to think and reflect because there wasn't anything to distract me. At the point of me going into the psych ward, I had been in cognitive behavior therapy or CBT for about 10 years. So a lot of their therapy programs and group therapy sessions were stuff that I'd kind of already heard before. And it's not like the group conversation was particularly riveting. But I had a very important conversation with a therapist and she left me with three letters that would change my life forever. D, B, T. It stands for dialectical behavior therapy, something I love and will stand until the end of time, but that is for another video. I don't even remember the name of the therapist that recommended it to me, but her insistence and confidence in the program is what gave me the motivation to do it. And so when I left, I sought out a program. DBT was how I got my life together. And that's how I ended up in a psych ward. If you want to hear more about psych wards, let me know in the comment section down below because I have lots to say about them. It was a necessary evil by some standards, but I'm glad I went when I did, even if they kind of were a little bit dramatic in the beginning with the whole threaten to uh, involuntarily commit me thing. Yeah, that was, uh, that was a bit much. But hey, at least there weren't handcuffs involved, so uh, I'm going to consider that a plus. 
And if you want to learn about that psychotic break that I mentioned in the very beginning of this video, you can check that out right over here. But other than that, thanks so much for watching this video and for joining me in making the uncomfortable comfortable. I will see you in the next video. Bye bye.